Howdy everyone, meteorologist Aaron Treadway here, and I wanted to quickly run through what we do at the National Weather Service, and then what other meteorology jobs there are out there that you could possibly do if you're interested in weather. So first, the National Weather Service is part of the federal government, and we are in charge of basic, basically making the forecasts and the warnings for the entire country. So this is a map of all the different Weather Service forecast offices across the country. I'm from the Austin San Antonio office down here in Texas, and y'all are part of the Albuquerque office up here in northwestern New Mexico. Albuquerque is actually one of the biggest offices in the lower 48 states um, and is only uh, smaller than some of the Alaska offices. But there are 122 forecast offices all across the country, including ones in Guam, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and then the three in Alaska. And we're open 24-7, 365, and we're forecasting the weather, issuing severe thunderstorm warnings and stuff to keep you all safe. And then just generally helping out in the community by giving severe weather talks, by coming to schools, by doing talks like I am for y'all. So that's what the weather service is, and that's why we're always open and we're always watching the weather. We cover what's called a county warning area. It's basically our area of responsibility. For us down here in Texas, for me, it's 33 counties. And we do the seven-day forecast, what you would see on TV. We do that. We issue the watches and warnings. So if there's any bad weather coming, we want to warn you. We want to warn your parents. We want to warn the teachers about what's going on. We also provide what's called decision support, basically helping people make decisions based on the weather, whether that's an emergency manager watching over a community. Maybe it's an event that's happening that we uh, help provide feedback for. We also do science. We do local research. So even though we've all graduated from high school, all graduated from college, we're still learning, we're still growing, and we're still doing that research. And then we do something called outreach. And basically it's what I'm doing to y'all, helping y'all understand the weather. We go out to various churches and schools and places in the community and we just talk about weather. We meet people, we share with them what they need to know about weather. So it's a really fun job and we get to do a lot of different things. This is what our forecast area looks like in a severe weather situation. So there's bad thunderstorms going on. You can actually see them up on TV. And we have, in this case, six different people in the office. We normally have two to three, but a lot of the times if there's bad weather, we get more. So the gentleman over here to the left, Mr. Steve's, answering phones and gathering storm reports from people. So people can call us up and just be like, hey, what's the weather going to be like today? I have a wedding to go to. Or, in the situation like this, they can call us up and be like, I just got quarter-sized hail. I, in the red here in the middle, am doing kind of the same thing, but I'm looking on Facebook and Twitter to try to find reports. And also to share information out to the world, to share the radar updates, to share the new warnings that we're issuing, to kind of get the word out to everybody. The two people in the back here, Mr. Orlando and Mr. Nick, are doing those severe warnings. So they're watching the radar. They're trying to see where the bad storms are gonna be and they're gonna warn on those storms to let the news people know, to let your parents know that, hey, there's a bad storm and it might be headed in your direction. But even in the times of bad weather, we still have to get the forecast out. So Mr. Bob here uh, in the red and Mr. Eric back there, they're still doing the aviation forecast for the airports and the seven day forecast to let you know what it's gonna be tomorrow and the day after that. So a lot of people use our forecast. So uh, aviation folks use our forecast. Airports do. Farmers need to know when it's going to rain and when they can plant. Transportation organizations need to know if it's going to snow. Do they need to plow the roads or uh, you know, prevent ice on them? Firefighters use it to know if there's going to be a bad forest fire or a bad grass fire. You know, Is uh, the weather outside really susceptible to these bad fires? Government officials use it. So mayors and governors and presidents. This is an example of President Bush here uh, at our southern region headquarters actually looking uh, at the forecast with two of our officials from the Weather Service uh, for Hurricane Katrina. Water management folks need to know how much rain is going to come. Do they need to let uh, water out of their dams and down the rivers? And then you, you do, your parents do, to know if you need to take shelter from the storm or know if it's okay to go out and play. So a lot of different people use our forecast. TV meteorologists are the folks who get those severe weather warnings that we issue out to the world. It's another 24-7 job. They work mornings, evenings, nights, and weekends. 
And they really are there to interact with you, the viewer. They work in partnership with us at the Weather Service. And there are local and national stations. Here are just a couple from one of the local Austin stations that I actually happened to work at for a summer. So they're the ones who help us get the forecast out to everybody every single day. Private sector meteorologists help companies, help businesses. A couple of examples are they help trains know if there's going to be bad weather and how that might impact their shipping. Same thing for ships, help them steer around bad hurricanes and bad storms. They help farmers and they help insurance companies know if the crops are going to be good this year and if they need to take out money to provide insurance just in case the crops aren't good. They develop phone apps and hazard services that provide customized forecasts and warnings in apps on smartphones. So there's a lot that different private sector meteorologists can do. And there's a lot of other jobs. Airlines employ meteorologists. Insurance companies, like I already said, sports teams. You can look into climate data and see the trends and temperatures. Computer programmers and radar technicians. Emergency managers prepare communities for the bad weather. And researchers help us grow and learn more about the weather. So there's a ton of different jobs that you could potentially do that all involve the weather. The big thing, though, is if you like the weather, if you've liked this unit, you have to concentrate on the math and you have to concentrate on the science. So these are some of the courses that I took in college. A chemistry course, two physics courses, two statistics courses, six higher level math courses called calculus, and then all these other meteorology courses from learning about fluids and temperatures to learning how to forecast, they all involved that physics and math and calculus. So if you like math, if you like science, and weather is something that is interesting to you, I say go for it and keep up the hard work.